Hi, welcome to the Proyaku Report, Volume 1, Episode 18, Multi-Position Pictures, Part 2. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. As you may recall, a couple episodes ago, I had talked about the research that I was doing at the time into pitchers who were also playing in fielding positions on a fairly regular basis. My research is now complete, and I've got a couple of Google Documents that I would like to share with you. The links for the documents will be in the show notes along with this video. If you happen to see this video in a place that does not have the links, then I recommend you go to the YouTube channel and check out the video there. Now, first things first. I had discussed last week that I thought that Takehiko Besho, a Hall of Fame pitcher, had completed this kind of feat. That is to say that he was both a pitcher and a fairly regular fielder. Now, if you go to Wikipedia and uh, look up Takehiko Besho, you will find that there is a good amount of general information about his career. And I would like to kind of go a little bit farther than what Wikipedia has to offer. The first thing that I did was I gathered up here on the right-hand side of this uh, table the number of games he played at positions throughout his career. Now, as you can see, in the war years and the years immediately after the war, Besho did play first base in the outfield in quite a few games. Still, not too great a number of games, but he was definitely playing in the field. Then, in 1949, the Giants had uh, snatched him up in a scandal of their own, one of many that the Giants had in acquiring players, and basically, um, you know, Besho stopped playing in other positions except for on very rare occasions. Now, if you look at the number of appearances that he pitched, and you compare that with the number of games that he played, you will find that he entered a large number of games, especially in those first few years in the early 1950s with the Giants, as a pinch hitter, which, of course, isn't covered in the fielding statistics. So he was definitely being used as a hitter, continuing along with the Giants, but he was no longer a hitter and a fielder. He finished his 17-year career with a two fifty four batting average and 35 home runs, so he definitely did know his way around with the bat. However... He never qualified for a batting title. And that's really the criteria that I was looking for in my study. That is to say, pitchers who qualified for both a pitching title and a batting title. So, to get to those, my research basically showed that in the very early days of the Japanese Baseball League, there were actually quite a few, especially in those um, multi-tournament seasons, such as, um, well, from the spring season of 1936 through the fall season of 1938. From 1939, it went to a single regular season with a great deal more games. And from that point, the number of 
people who qualified for both trailed off a bit. However, there were still several all the way up through the end of the war and even up to 1950. So basically, I found 14 players. And I've got to say that some of them did not rank very high when it came to their batting ability. However, they did still qualify for a batting title, even though none of them won one. The 14 players that I found who met both criteria, that is, the number of innings, or in one season, complete games, and had the requisite number of at-bats to qualify for pitching and batting titles respectively, are as follows, in alphabetical order. Indo Chujiro, Fujimura Fumio, Furuya Kuranosuke, Go Chosei, Ito Jiro, Kageura Masaru, Naito Kozo, Nakagawa Miyoshi, Maekawa Hachiro, Noguchi Akira, Noguchi Jiro, Noguchi Masaaki, Otomo Kazuaki, and Shimizu Hideo. Now, I, I invite you to look at these numbers in your own leisure with the link that I shall provide with this video podcast. But there was one player who really stood out, and that was Noguchi Jido. Noguchi Jido, from 1939 to 1946, oh, that is six seasons, uh, qualified five times for both the pitching and batting titles. In 1943, during that stretch, was the only time that he didn't make it, and he fell only three at-bats short of qualifying for the batting title as well as the pitching title. Through 1948, Noguchi was mainly a pitcher. From 1949, he transitioned into a fielder, and occasionally he started, relieved, and even closed. Over his 13-season career, he pitched in 517 games, had 237 wins, 139 losses, and a 1.96 ERA. In the 1946 season, this one was especially interesting in that he was ranked in fifth place overall for the pitchers, and on the batting side of things, he had a 31-game consecutive hitting streak. That is from August 29 through October 26th. He hit in 31 consecutive games. Noguchi Jido was inducted into the Japanese Baseball Hall of Fame in 1989. Now, I'm not nearly the baseball historian that Rob Fitz is, nor do I write as well as he does. You'll know what I mean if you've read Banzai Babe Ruth. But the forays that I've had into investigating and reading, especially Rob Fitz's work, about the history of Japanese baseball has just been fascinating to me. And all I can hope is that some of that kind of rubs off on you. Please let me know. And now it's time for the Pocket Calendar. The Japan Baseball Weekly Podcast will be coming out tomorrow, April 29th. John sat down for a chat with Josh Whitesell at Sebadome earlier this past week. 
John and Jim afterwards will most likely give their usual analysis talking about the interview. Then they plan on discussing the Chivalote Marines, the Home Run Revival, and also cover some other miscellaneous notes throughout the leagues. You don't want to miss it. And if you know of any upcoming Pro Yaki related events, I invite you to give us a shout out in the Pro Yaku community on Google Plus and let us know there. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaku Report. Thank you for joining me. Till next week, take care.